In 1959 on Mother's Day, my parents started Lakewood right here on this property. It used to be a feed store that held 90 people. And I remember the humble beginnings here at Lakewood. People sometimes say, why did you want to have a big church? But Lakewood didn't start big, it started very small. The scripture says, don't despise the day of small beginnings. Don't despise where God has you right now. You don't know what can happen when you're faithful with what God's called you to do. I think about it, it wasn't just my parents. There were 90 people here that were faithful too. They gave, they came, they supported. Who would have ever thought that Lakewood would be where it is today? You don't know where God is going to take you as you continue to be faithful. My father pastored here for several years, then he did go overseas for a few years, but for 12 years, Lakewood still had less than 200 people. My dad came back from these big crusades overseas where he had tens of thousands of people and came back to pastor these 90 people. People used to say to him, John, what are you doing there in Northeast Houston in that little feed store? What are you doing pastoring there? You have so much in you. But my dad would say, you know what, I'm doing exactly what God called me to do. He stayed faithful with those 90 people. And I believe if he had not passed the test in that proving time of doing the right thing when nothing was growing, being his best when he wasn't seeing increase, I don't think we would be where we are today or he would have seen the, the goodness of God like he did in his life. I think the point is, is there all, we all have these seasons that are times of testing, times of proving. You're doing the right thing and nothing's happening. You're not seeing growth. You're not seeing dreams come to pass. Keep doing the right thing. God sees your faithfulness. He sees you coming to church. He sees you giving. He sees you, you know, being good to your family. He sees you being your best at work when you're not getting the credit. Listen, you're in a time of testing and proving. You keep doing the right thing and then God will open up doors. Great it is to dream the dream when you're standing youth by the starry stream. But a greater thing is to fight life through and say at the end, the dream is true. I remember when I was 10 years old, Victoria, I would be sitting in the building, 90 other people, and the church was starting to grow a little bit. And my dad would say, Y'all look out there, can you see that auditorium seating a thousand people? Well, all there was was a big field, and all I saw was a little boy was the side of the building, just the wood building inside. But my father taught us, you have to see it before it's going to come to pass. It's a great principle. I call it having a vision of victory through your eyes of faith. You're not denying the circumstances, but you're seeing beyond that. You gotta see through your eyes of faith who you wanna be, who God's called you to be. You know, you're in debt, you gotta see yourself out of debt. You're fighting an illness, you gotta see yourself healthy. How about see yourself accomplishing your dreams? See yourself doing great things for the kingdom. It's gotta start on the inside with your inner vision. That's your faith being released. That's what allows God to bring it to pass. And you know, there were people sitting in the audience thinking, I don't see a building. But you know, a couple years later, we were able to build that building, seating a thousand people debt free. And it wasn't just that one, it kept going and going. And that's the goodness of God. As you enlarge your vision, watch what God will do. Lakewood was just a small community church, but my dad renamed it Lakewood International Outreach Center. He had this big sign with the, with the globe on top of it. And if you drove by, you know, I don't know if you think it's an international outreach center. It had a couple hundred people, but again, you gotta speak faith into your future. You gotta speak faith into your destiny. You gotta call yourself who you wanna be. And that's what my dad did. And it wasn't at the time an international outreach center, but you look up today and every Sunday, people watch the services from every country in the world. Who would have ever thought, man, it started way back with my parents calling it an international outreach center. Call yourself, your dreams, your children, call them what you want them to be. Call them what God says they are. Jonathan was just learning to walk and we were shooting some pieces for our new television opening and we had Jonathan run up to my father and it just all worked perfect and that became part of our TV opening for many, many years. Well, Jonathan's now, you know, 26 years old, children are growing up. The principle is from generation to generation, we're going to tell of God's goodness. I don't know if you came from a heritage of faith like I did. If you did, take it further. Keep God first place, keep honoring Him. Who knows what'll happen, what you'll make happen for future generations. Well, you say, Joe, I didn't come from a heritage of faith at all. Well, you're the one to start it. You wouldn't be hearing this unless God wanted you to set a new standard, to take your family to a, a new level, leave a legacy of faith. 
Let me tell you, generations to come, they'll look back at you and say, you were the difference maker. God has good things in store for you and your family. Let's be people that honor Him, and who knows where God will take you. Your seed, the seed of the righteous, are going to be mighty in the land. I was 37 years old when we founded this church. Can you believe that I was ever 37? <laughs> I've given this church almost half of my life. But today, as I celebrate 75 years and 57 years in the ministry, I consecrate myself to be a good pastor. My father preached his last sermon in December 1999 here at the East Houston campus. And many times after service, he would, he'd go out the doors that way, or sometimes he would go out these doors. He parked right out there. And it's interesting, the last time he ever went out these doors, it was on a Sunday night, he stopped and he turned back around. My friend Johnny was with him and he just paused and he looked back over the whole auditorium and he said, wow, Johnny, can you believe what God has done? He lived with this thrill and this awe of what God had done in his life. 77 years old, he'd preached in this building many, many times, but he was still in awe. Last time he ever walked out. That teaches me, don't let the miracles in your life become common. Don't let what God has done for you become routine. Hey, no big deal, got this building. No big deal, God healed me. No big deal, he opened this door for me. No, we should live in amazement. You've got to remember all the great things God has done and just don't let it become routine. The day your child was born and the day God gave you that job, the day you fell in love and met that person. I think it's important to just keep your mind filled with the goodness of God. That's what allows God to do more great things in your life. God has always been in control at Lakewood Church. And when we lost our big papa in January, we didn't know what was going to happen. But Jesus knew, God knew, he was in control. And he spoke to a young man's heart and he preached his first sermon, as Lisa said, just before his father went to heaven. And it's my honor and my privilege to today announce the official new pastor of Lakewood Church, our son, Joel Osteen and his wife, Victoria. You know, Joel, when your father passed away and we resumed the responsibility of lead pastors and we looked at this building, it was amazing. We didn't know if we could even keep it going. So we just were doing our best to put one foot in front of the other, just trying to be there, trying to be in the moment. And I remember our children were so small. Let's see, Alexandra was uh, three months old yeah. and Jonathan was, what, three and a half. And uh, it was just such an incredible feeling to just just call out to God and say, God, help us. We don't really know what we're doing. I know, that's what it's all about, you know. God gives you grace for every season in life and never dreaming it would grow and where, where we would be today. And I think about Victoria, we all go through disappointments, yeah. all go through loss and heartache sometimes. And you think, oh man, this is, it's never gonna be good after this. But you gotta know God has beauty for the ashes. I've learned God doesn't close a door unless he's going to open another door. Even when you lose a loved one, I'm not saying that's easy. Easy, but that is not the end of your life. You have to let go of the ashes before you'll receive the beauty. So I just encourage you that God's still in control. He's still ordering your steps. He has good things in store for you and your family. You keep moving forward. I'm not saying you're gonna understand everything in life. I wanted my dad to live to be 100. He passed at 77 years old, but you know what? God was in control and he even used that to push us out into our destiny. So I know God has beauty for those ashes. You let go of what you don't understand and you move forward into the new things God has in store. You know, God is such a good God. And he is, amen. And Joel has always uh, been a believer in holding on to your dreams. And he taught an awesome series of messages on holding on to your dreams. And I want to tell you, this man fought the good fight of faith. <laughs> I just want to say this, that it's not just a victory for Lakewood Church, but we believe it's a victory for the kingdom of God. We believe it's a victory for the kingdom of God, for pastors all over this world, that they can hold on to their dreams and that God wants to do big things. And He wants to take, our, take the church to a newer and higher level. And I saw Joel day after day and night after night go into his prayer closet and do war with the enemy. 
And I want to tell you, it's been such an encouragement to me to know that when you press into God and you consecrate your life to Him, and you give Him everything you got, He'll make your dreams come true. And yeah, Daddy started the dream, and He not only passed on the mantle, but He passed on the dream. And the dream is true, amen? You know, there's one thing I have to say. Joel has always been so very dedicated and the dedication to the call of God and taking on this responsibility was just amazing to watch. You know, it could have been so easy to just stay comfortable, but there was one thing about Joel, he was always pushing forward. He was always wanting to build, always wanting to step out to where God was calling him to in really deep waters. Even the compact center was such an unknown. And, you know, I just admire the way, Joel, you just, kept that big picture in front of you, trusting God, believing that if He called you to do it, He's going to provide. And through all the people, through all the giving, through all the support, God has done amazing things through this ministry. You know, it reminds me, you have to take the limits off of God because I didn't think I could do it. I wasn't trained to do this, but when you believe, all things are possible. And I've learned God puts things in your spirit that are bigger than your mind can handle probably at the time. You know, you may not have the finances, you may not have the connections, but God has everything you need to get you to your destiny. And you've heard this Compact Center story many times. God fought our battles. He brought the right people. He made a way where we didn't see a way. Well, He's going to do that for you. He's done it in the past. He's going to do it again in the future. Sometimes we, we don't just limit God, we limit ourselves. We think about how we just don't have the talent, we don't have the ability. The finances. You got think everything you need to become who God has called you to be. So you stir up the gifts, believe for your dreams, stay faithful, trust God's timing and trust His way. May not happen the way you thought or in your timing, but God's ways are better than our ways. But I'm honored and thrilled to be able to step into this new position of leadership here at Lakewood Church. Daddy was my hero and I'm just humbled to follow in his footsteps. This is the production control room, and I spent a lot of time here directing the services. Every time my dad spoke, I would have to listen to the message four or five different times because I had to edit it down to time. He may speak 40 minutes, and for the TV program, it could only be 25 minutes. So I would hear those messages again and again, all the stories, all the scriptures. And I'd have to try to figure out my dad's train of thought to know what I could cut out. Well, I never realized that God was getting me prepared for what I'm doing now all those stories, all those scriptures, how to prepare a sermon, it was going into me back when I thought I was just going to be in the television side my whole life. My point is, you don't know what God is getting you prepared for right now. You probably say like me, hey, Joel, I'm just a technician. I'm just a school teacher. I'm just an architect. You're not just anything. You're a child of the Most High God. I believe He's getting you prepared for something bigger, something greater. May not to be to stand on a platform, but just to give you influence so you can touch this world in a greater way. And I've learned this, every day you go to work and you're faithful, you give it your best, you're good to your family, you do the right thing, even when the wrong thing is happening, God is keeping the records. You are one day closer to seeing God open up a door that you never dreamed would open. We never imagined we would be here today, but you've seen the goodness of God, let me tell you, the, his greatness is still in front of you. You're going to see Him show out in your life as you continue to be faithful.